Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is study tips for medical coding students. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. I have been a medical coder for over 10 years. I really love to share the things that I know with all of you. So I hope you'll take a second, hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, and at the end of this video helps you, I hope that you will share it. So let's get started. All right, lots of questions about study tips. Where to begin, how much time to spend, what does one really need to know <laughs> when it comes to anatomy? All right, so here's the thing. The first thing I gotta say is this. Rome was not built in a day. <laughs> Therefore, you are not gonna learn everything about anatomy, physiology, medical terminology in a short period of time. This is going to be over the span of a long period of time. So what you need to do is start with the good building blocks. Learn on medical terminology, learn your prefixes, suffixes, and root words. That is going to take the guessing game out of a lot of medical terms because medical terms are generally pieced together, okay? They're made up of Latin and Greek words, all right? So unless you know Latin or Greek, <laughs> um, it's all Greek, right? Uh, then, you know, then you would be able to know these things right away since a lot of us don't, um, we have to learn these things in building blocks. This is why I tell you guys, please hear me when I tell you guys, when it comes to medical terminology, I've been 10 plus years in and I'm still looking up terms, <laughs> okay? So you want to learn prefixes, suffixes, and root words. How do you learn these? Flashcards, my people, and not the ones that you can buy, not the ones that you can um, look at online, the little flip kind. Y'all know what I'm talking about, the ones on the apps. Now, yes, there's a lot of really good study apps out there, and that's great. But when it comes to the building blocks time, the learning time, you have to do things the old fashioned way. You have to learn things a step at a time. And I know for a lot of people, especially getting into medical coding, some have not been in school for years. I was not in school for many years <laughs> before I got into medical coding, uh, but I am a reader by nature and because I wanted to be an attorney when I was a kid. So that sort of prepared me for what I do now because it's a lot of reading and it's a lot of interpreting what I'm reading, comprehending <laughs> what I'm reading. So because of this, it was a little bit easier for me. And if you are a studier, it's a little bit easier because you know what to do. You know how you best learn. Sometimes when people don't know the best way they, they learn, they have to try different approaches. But the thing about it is you have to start with the small building blocks and you have to do things the old fashioned way, which is the flashcards. And flashcards meaning you get a deck of index cards Cheap ones from the Dollar Tree, Dollar Store, any dollar store in your area. Pack of uh, index cards for less than a buck or even a dollar, you know. And then you write out <laughs> the word on one side and you write out the definition on the other side, the, the meaning of it on the other side. And while this seems menial, right, because you think, really, do I have to do this? Yes, because the more you engage your handwriting, the more your brain is going to recognize, okay, we're writing something, what are we writing? So then it's going to start remembering, okay? Your brain is a magnificent tool, okay? It is a magnificent tool. And the fact that it records things. We just have to learn how to give it the information so that we can recall it. When you're engaging handwriting and looking at something and studying it and uh, repeating it to yourself, it is literally recording it in your mind. Next, you know, next thing you know, is you're just gonna be able to spout it off just automatically because you've been repeating it. Now, <laughs> to quote a few <laughs> surgeons I know, they say that the key to adult education is repetition, and this is true. Um, somebody commented on a video that they said that in their class for the guidelines, right, the ICD-10 CM guidelines, that their, her whole class literally would read the guidelines top to bottom once a week. That is literally just reading the entire guidelines once a week. You don't have to sit there and pick it apart, okay? Just reading them and just going with it. It is like exercise. You do have to engage 
everything when you are doing this. By reading, you're paying attention, you're looking at the words, and you're just going through and you're reading it. And just do it once a week. And by the time you know it, when you get in like two, two months, you got eight times you've already done that. A lot of medical coders have not read the coding guidelines eight times. And now you have, right? Because you've just been reading it. And it is just something that when you keep doing it, it's going to get faster. So it's not gonna take you an hour to read all the guidelines. It'll compress into however fast your brain starts to say, okay, well, I recognize this and we're, gonna, we're reading this. So we need to absorb this. So I know I'm looking at these words, okay? And I'm remembering this. Your brain is doing it, but you have to give it the information so that it can do its job. And a lot of times people let fear stop them from, from studying, stop them from getting to their goals, or they hear people around them, you know, giving that negative attitude. The thing is with adults and adult learning, right? You have the added complication of life, right? So when we're kids and we're in school, right? What is your job in, in, in when you're a kid? To go to school. <laughs> that's, that's what your parents say, right? You have one job to do, go to school and learn. <laughs> so we don't have all of these extra things until like we get into like middle school and high school and then things start to change, right? Because then we start going from uh, adolescent into adulthood when we uh, get out of high school. So with that, it, that said, we have to kind of go back to the same things, those building blocks when we were in school. What did we do? We looked at all the letters in the alphabet, right? And that was how you practice. And you did your, your sing song, right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It's the same thing when you're an adult. Now you got to revert back. But this time, you're going to be learning medical terms. You're going to be learning anatomy, physiology, um, and just different rules and all of these things. So you have to adopt that same type of mentality and don't let the fact that you've been out of school for years keep you from doing what you want to do. Everybody has to give themselves a chance to try something new because you never know where your path is going to take you if you always stop all the time and you, you don't want to study or you get so tired and, and how come I can't learn this? You're learning it. You are learning it. You may not be able to spout it back right away, right? But you have to give yourself time. It's not something that, like I said, you're not gonna absorb this overnight. And if you're in, ex in an accelerated program, say that five times fast. <laughs> if you are in an, in an accelerated program, you, you are gonna feel that pressure that you need to, to learn all these things and, and learn all of these um, rules and everything and you need to learn them quickly. Pace yourself and don't run ahead. Go with the flow of the program. If the program is, if you are on medical terminology, then that's what you need to focus on. Don't be trying to look at the guidelines. Don't try to look at the, um, the test exam prep book. Don't try to do all that concentrate on what you have in front of you because it is about taking one step at a time as far as like how much time you need to spend studying per day everybody is different so you need to work out a schedule you need to work out time to yourself and for some parents it's like well i only have a, an hour or maybe i have a half hour while my kid is asleep and i'm awake well then you need to take advantage of that half hour well you know my kid goes to um daycare or something like that, then spend the time reading. Spend the time to do the flashcards and start flipping the flashcards and, and just doing those things. You have to do those steps. And if your kids will not leave you alone, <laughs> get them involved. Get them involved and say, okay, if you want to, um, if you, if you want me to pay attention to you, fine, hold the flashcard up and I will say what, what this is. And, and you just hold them up and, and just work with me. And believe it or not, kids are naturally helpers, right? At least for my generation. <laughs> I don't know now, right? Um, but uh, a lot of times kids are helpers. I don't think that ever changes with children, you know? And they want to help. They want to be involved in the process. So if they're, if they're, if they're after you, then, you know, make them part of the process then. It'll make them feel good. It will also give you the opportunity to learn more 
And side benefit, they're going to be learning as well, no matter how, how little they are. You've seen those, those um, talented kid videos where they say, well, this kid knows like all their bones and, you know, all these things. Well, I mean, they had to start somewhere. So you never know. But like I said, it's an added benefit when you involve your kids. And then after a while, if they don't want to do it, then they'll take off and they'll leave you alone enough to do your studies okay so take that into consideration sometimes it's not always a bad thing if your kids are with you and, and trying to study okay because the whole family can benefit all right but it's going to take discipline because your kids are watching you i've said this a hundred times in the other videos if you have people around you they're watching you they need to see your determination now it's whether it's not it's your kids or your maybe your siblings or something like that if it's somebody else everybody is watching what you do. The more determination you show, the easier it's going to be to have that discipline to be able to read. Because at the end of the day, the biggest advice I can give you guys is to read. And that's really the ins and outs of it. When you're reading and you take the time to, to just read and, oh, well, I'm tired of reading. Okay, well then find um, videos on YouTube that are explaining the body, anatomy, physiology, medical terminology, find those videos and just listen to them. There are videos that have uh, medical terminology and then you can learn like how to pronounce the words. You can learn those things as well. So there's many different avenues to learning things. I, <laughs> when I was in medical coding school, I used to watch, um, I think I watched House when I was in medical coding school. I used to watch House the show House MD, because I liked to hear the way that they talked and the, and the words that they use. So when I didn't know what they were talking about, I would look it up. <laughs> and interestingly enough, um, the inspiration for those stories uh, from House were from actual cases. So I thought that was very interesting when I saw, saw the little trivia thing. Um, but it's true. So when you can find things like that that are more about the medicine and not about the drama, <laughs> it can help. But like I said, if you're a visual learner, try to find videos on YouTube on whatever is stumping you, okay? Take your time. Don't try to memorize uh, medical terms. Just focus on the uh, prefixes, suffixes, and the root words. Focus on those things. And as far as like, what do you need to learn about the anatomy? Break it down, okay? So break it down into like the bones and the organs. If this helps you, Break it down that way so that way you're not trying to learn everything all at one time and maybe you can concentrate on just one area of the body and then just sort of go through those like the circulatory system and uh, the gastrointestinal system. Think about those things, okay? Your neurological system, <laughs> you know, with your brain and everything else. So just break it down into sections like that. Uh, and also, if you're interested, I got to plug my channel. Uh, I do have a Patreon channel and I do do um, crosswords. I make crossword puzzles. Now, I've been a little late on the uploads because <laughs> I typically do the uploads on Sunday. Uh, but however, this last couple of weeks has just been a lot of stuff going on. So <laughs> it's been like Wednesday I upload them. But uh, it's crosswords. And, you know, I give you like a clue. And then you, you just have to figure it out. So it does help with medical terminology because if you have to open up that uh, medical dictionary, you can use Tabor's, you can use Dorland's. I personally use Dorland's uh, medical dictionary because it's got a lot of really good um, illustrations in it. So figure out which way you learn best by listening or by visual and go with whatever makes things easier for you. But do the heavy lifting, guys. And that is writing out those flashcards. Because a lot of times the most frustrated people that I have talked to are the ones that are saying that they use the apps on their phone. And I said, well, are you doing any flashcards at all? And they said, well, I don't want to do that. Okay, well, you don't have to take my advice. But I'm just telling you, have you tried it? Well, no, I just don't want to do it. Okay. <laughs> you know, but how did you learn with flashcards? That's how I learned, okay? So it's gonna take dedication and commitment and that's really <laughs> what it is all about. So that is my, uh, my, my study tips. 
it's it's not the it's not the magic pill guys it is literally the hard work it's the heavy lifting it's reading it's doing the flashcards and it's repeating these things and like i said when you um, read the guidelines once a week it will get easier it will get faster and you will get much better at it and even if you feel like you don't understand it keep reading it because when people stop at that point because they think oh well i don't understand this just keep reading it i read the new england journal of medicine i subscribe to them and they send me a journal every week and i read it i read it on saturdays saturdays is what i do i read and <laughs> reading it do you think i know all those words uh no can i pronounce a lot of them uh no <laughs> I can look at them, but I can't pronounce it. I'm like, I'm not even going to try to pronounce this, but I keep reading it and it has helped me to become a more detailed medical coder because now I understand the point of view from actual doctors and surgeons. And that is key. Okay. So I'm, go I'm going to go ahead and close this one up because I've got some other things to do, but I hope you'll join me for tomorrow's show. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I will leave the link for my Patreon channel down in the description box below if you're interested. And uh, so I'm going to wrap this one up. If you are a medical coder, a medical coding student, somebody curious about the fascinating world of medical coding, a provider or a nurse, I invite you to like and subscribe and follow me on my journey in medical coding. I will see y'all next time. Bye.